Yes, it's a blessing having you here today. And um, as you can see, our message, we're going to be speaking about legacy, how we can pass on a legacy of faith. And um, I was reading, you know that most uh, in business families, let me open this a little close here, most business families um, don't go beyond the third, the third generation in their business world. In other words, after the third generation, they usually, does not usually continue. But the Ford family, the Ford Motor family, uh, their family's fifth generation is still uh, leading out at Ford. The great, great grandchildren of Ford Motors founder, Henry Ford, now are among the ranks, those serving in those capacities there at the uh, Ford Motors. Uh, this is according to Wall Street Journal. This means that there have been five generations of Fords, five generations involved in the business of uh, the cars. It all started in 1903, 120 years ago. Um, Henry Ford, you know, they build the, um, the Model T Ford, and um, they're still going forward. Uh, and so, and the reason the family is still involved over a century in the business, in the car business, is that every generation, every generation invested in the next generation. That's what we know. We too can invest in our homes. If we want homes that are Christian, homes where people have a relationship with Jesus Christ and in our church, we need to invest. We also need to invest in our future. Each one of us can leave a legacy of faith. Yes, in order for us to do this, we must live lives that invest in our children, in our family, in our church. We need to invest. And uh, so that's what we're going to be addressing this morning, passing the baton, in other words, leaving a legacy. And so I want to invite you to open your Bibles this morning to 2 Timothy. This is going to be the passage we're going to be looking at. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. <clears throat> let, us you know, let us consider the simple thought of passing the baton. Passing the baton. I have a baton here. When I was in high school, I ran on the a relay team, San Jose High School. And I was third man on the relay. And it's very important how you pass the baton. If you drop the baton, it's over. The race is over. You've been disqualified. You're out. Or if you step on the other, after you pass the baton, you step on the other lane, you get disqualified. So it's very important how one passes the baton. And um, our relay team, our first runner, he was supposed to get us ahead. He was one of our fastest runners. The second runner was supposed to maintain. It wasn't the fastest. I was number three. I was supposed to catch up or keep, keep up. Our fourth runner was the fastest. They call the fa fourth runner the anchor. And the fourth runner, we used to call him Bullet. Bullet because when he took off, I mean, he just sped. I mean, he was fast. And so as I was coming around the corner, and you see there, as I was coming around the corner, getting, there's only a 20, a 20 feet zone in which to pass the baton. You can't run all the way across. There's only a zone in which to pass the baton. As I was coming around, I would yell, go bullet. 
and I give him the baton, and we could be 10 feet behind. We could be 10 feet behind, and Bullet would win the race. For the final, we won the race. We won because the, the baton was passed successfully. Yes, it was passed successfully, so we were able to win the race. Now, in many ways, you know, leaving a legacy is much like passing the baton. So while Je Jesus was on earth, he wanted to create and leave a legacy of faith in people that would last through the test of time. He wanted his ministry to continue in the lives of his disciples and followers. So, and to accomplish this, to accomplish, you know, his legacy to continue, he deposited his legacy in people. Not in buildings, not in cathedrals, not in museums, but in people. Why? Why did he want to leave his legacy of faith in people? Because people reproduce, people continue. And so that's what he wanted to do. And <clears throat> this is what we're going to learn today. You know, legacy of people, his method. In order to pass the legacy of faith, we must be involved in the process of discipleship. What does a discipleship involve? When we talk about leaving a legacy of faith, discipleship, what does it involve? What does it cover? If we look at discipleship, one of the big major areas is teaching, instruction. If you want to pass something on in your home, in your church, you got to instruct. We need to teach. Teaching was a big part of Jesus' discipleship. And training. Jesus trained his disciples. He mentored them. He modeled what it is like to be a Christian. These are things we need to learn ourselves and participation. We need to get involved. If we want to have our home, leave a legacy in our home, we need to be involved in our children. We need to be involved in their education, the modeling, how we live. We need to do that in order to pass a legacy and participation in doing. This is the model in Jesus' relationship with his disciples. You know, let us consider <clears throat> Jesus' method of working in the lives of his disciples and followers. For three years, Jesus did not cease to teach. He was always teaching. If you look in the Gospels, he was teaching others. In fact, half of the Gospels present Jesus, half of the Gospels, teaching. Teaching the word. And the core group of his students, you know who they were? They were his disciples. <clears throat> Whenever the disciples wanted to know the meaning of something. For example, a parable that Jesus was saying, like the parable of the sower. You know, they would ask Jesus. He would take them apart, and he would explain it to them, revealing insights of truth that he wanted them to understand. And he wanted them to understand for a reason. And you know, that reason was so they can in turn disciple others, teach others, model for others, train others. That's how a legacy, that's how a baton is passed, a baton of faith. <clears throat> so we see this, the discipleship model that I'm talking about here, we see in Jesus' relationship with Paul, the Apostle Paul. And that's what I want to briefly, I want us to look at how the baton how the legacy went on from one disciple to another. How did Jesus disciple? Notice our selected text again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. You then, my son, be strong. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard, 
me say, in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to what? To teach others. In the verses we're going to consider this morning, we see the following. Jesus discipled Paul. Paul discipled Timothy. And then the Bible says that Timothy discipled other men. Those men discipled others. Someone discipled me. Someone discipled you. <clears throat> that is how the baton is passed. That's how a legacy of faith continues. Jesus discipled Paul. Let's look at that. What you have heard from me, what Paul taught others, he learned from our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul says in Galatians 1, verses 11 and 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, it is likely, very likely, that um, <clears throat> the teachings, what Paul received, either revelation, a lot, of, a lot of scholars believe that that took place uh, when he was in Arabia for three years. After the encounter with Jesus, you know, on the road to Damascus, he went to Arabia for three years. And it's believed that he received discipleship training from Jesus himself in Arabia. Now, yeah, that's where he received the teaching. <clears throat> sorry, the teaching. Paul received the instruction, you know, not from the apostles. And it's interesting because he, even though he didn't receive instruction from the apostles, disciples, they had the same gospel, the same doctrine. Yes, he received from the Lord himself, he says. He wasn't taught by man. Yes, Jesus called him for a special ministry. When he was met by the Lord in the road to Damascus, you know, and he went to Ananias, he was told that he was, Ananias was told that he was a special instrument to take the gospel, to take the good news, to teach the Gentiles, and to appear before kings, and also the children of Israel. Jesus called him for a special ministry, to be an apostle to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish communities. And he trained and equipped Paul, trained and equipped Paul to do what he had called him to do, Jesus has invested time in Paul. There was much for him to learn, much for Paul to learn and unlearn. He did it, and it didn't happen overnight. Jesus spent much time, much time in Arabia with the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> they must have talked about the gospel, the crucifixion, the resurrection. He gave them a lot of information, even about heaven as we know. He taught him many other things throughout his life, because throughout our lives we learn, and Paul learned. And what was the purpose? What was the purpose of God taking this time to teach Paul so he could teach others? See, the legacy has to continue. We cannot drop the baton. And so, one of those who Paul discipled was Timothy. Notice, Paul poured his life into Timothy. He, training him, modeling. Timothy went with him on many of the missionary trips. So he was learning, listening to Paul, watching Paul. Paul was his mentor and encouraged him to do the same as Paul was doing, as Paul was teaching him. Yes, Paul discipled Timothy. What you have heard from me, what did Timothy hear from Jesus? I mean, from Paul. The answer is found in the previous chapter. 2 Timothy 1.13, hold fast the form of sound words, 
which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul told Timothy the word of God. He taught him scripture. It seems that Timothy was a convert as a result of Paul's ministry. Paul refers to him as his own son in the faith. The scriptures reveal Paul's great love and admiration for Timothy. Paul invested in Timothy. His desire was, why did he invest in Timothy? That was, it was so Timothy could do the same with others, with other people, also invest in them. Timothy was well prepared for ministry. He had one of the best teachers, the Apostle Paul, who invested in him and helped him. Yes, Paul taught Timothy the ways of the Lord and encouraged him to participate in that same ministry toward others. Now, Jesus spent, spent time training Paul in the work of ministry. Likewise, Paul, Paul invested time in training Timothy and training Timothy to do the, do the work of ministry. Paul's end goal, what was Paul's end goal? It was for Timothy to take what he had learned from Paul and to share that with others. That was his goal. And that is what Paul did. He trained Timothy. Timothy passed the baton to others, the baton of grace. That's what the Word of God tells us. Notice that Timothy, after he received the training, after he received the modeling from Paul, he disciples others. He disciples other men. You have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men. Notice the progression here of discipleship. Jesus trains Paul. He teaches Paul. He takes Paul with him under his wing. And Paul then takes Timothy, he trains Timothy, he goes to Timothy and helps Timothy. And then Timothy, once he, is, he, he has been taught, he's, been, he's seen how ministry is done, then he, it, the Bible tells us, passes the baton to certain men. And we don't know the names of these men, but the Bible says they were faithful people that he passed the baton to. Faithful men, not one, but many. Just as Paul invested his time in Timothy, Timothy invested time in these uh, faithful men, sharing the gospel, teaching them, modeling, training them for ministry. Yes. And um, that's the way the baton is passed. And the process of spiritual reproduction, how the, the Lord and the church continues. We need to continue helping others. And that's what Paul, Paul to Timothy, Timothy to faithful men, and they taught others. Notice, those men discipled others, those faithful men. What you have heard, it says, <clears throat> from me in the presence of many witnesses entrusted to faithful men, you will be able to teach others also. <clears throat> the men who were taught by Timothy continued the process, continued to pass the baton, the legacy. And so and what did they do? What did these faithful men do? They obeyed the gospel commission. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. This is what these faithful men did. And women, by the way. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. How long? Always even unto the end of the world. Amen. Here's what happened. They went out and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ and pointed people to the Savior, pointed people to Jesus Christ, teaching and preaching. The Holy Spirit convicted people as they were preaching of their sins, and they repented, and they also looked to the Savior. And these people, men and women, 
who gave their lives to Jesus were baptized in the name of Christ and the Holy Spirit used these people. They carried the great commission, the great teaching. More than teaching them, they invested in them. They trained them to continue the process, to continue the process, the legacy, continue passing on the baton. And it, that is just what they did. Those men reached others, and those others reached others. And the process continued. Someone discipled you. Someone discipled me. Someone discipled us. Each of us owe a debt, a debt of gratitude to those who are willing to obey the, the commission, Christ's command to go and make disciples. You know, I am grateful. I am grateful. You know, the truth is, we have many different people who have invested in you and myself who taught us the good news. God has placed, you know, certain people in your path, my path, certain people in order for them to point them to God. You know, I was blessed. I was blessed to have a God-fearing mother who loved the Lord. And um, when we became Seventh-day Adventists, you know, she would take us to church uh, she would send me to Bible camps. She invested in me. And uh, I remember there was other people. There were pastors. I remember some of my Sabbath school teachers. I remember a, a, a youth teacher that encouraged me to go to college. I came from a very poor home. And I was the first one to go to college. And I remember, like I mentioned, you know, I used to run to the track team. I was involved in sports. And um, I didn't think I was college material. And I remember this teacher, the Sabbath school teacher. He says, go to college. And then he says, most of the students are average. Yeah, you get some real bright ones. It, put effort. That's what it, what it ha You put effort, and you're going to do well. And so he encouraged me. I went to college. I got some degrees. So we have people that have invested in us. And that's what we need to do with others. We need to invest in other people. You know, at the last church I was pastoring at, um, it, a Baptist, Baptist church was, they were renting from our church. And they closed down. And some of the people wanted con to continue worshiping, but they didn't have the money to continue renting our church. And uh, we had a member that made friends with some of those people. And so I said, well... You could uh, come. I can uh, give you classes. I can continue to. If you want to come free, you got to, you, you know, you could be in my class and we could, you know. And I had a member, a, a young lady, that spoke to one of those members, and the member says, I don't think you're Christian. And you know what she said to her? Come and see. And that, young, that lady came to see, came to my class, and she became such a faithful member, a good leader of our church. I had the privilege of baptizing her and about four or five others from that congregation that came and wanted to know the Lord, wanted to know more, more about Christ. So, you know, we want to pass the baton. We want to help others to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm sure you have had people in your life that impacted your life. And we could thank God. We should be grateful. And so I am thankful there were people in my life that passed the baton of faith and um, helped me. One more time, let us notice the process of passing the baton, a legacy. Jesus discipled Paul in Arabia. You remember that? <clears throat> Paul discipled who? Timothy. Timothy, the Bible tells us, discipled other men. And it says they were faithful men. And those men discipled others, and others discipled you and discipled me. And now we need to disciple others in our home. In our, you know, we need to, you know, help people. 
know the Lord Jesus Christ, saved by grace. We have a good God, a loving God. So, as, as Christians, you know, I see it as a privilege to be able to pass the baton, to make disciples. Jesus made it clear that we were to, you know, to pass, you know, to teach others. And you know what? He empowers us to do it. You know, he's the one. The Bible says in Acts 1.8, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and all of Judea, Judea and Samaria and unto the utter parts of the earth. You know, the Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us to share the gospel, enlighten us. You know, the Holy Spirit does so much for us. And so we need to go ahead and help others. It's that simple. We are to witness for Jesus Christ, point people to the cross. As we study the Great Commission and examine the practical ministry models of Jesus, of Paul, and the disciples, we can conclude that this discipleship is pouring ourselves into other people, helping other people, our children, helping others know Jesus better, and growing in our Lord Jesus Christ, growing in our faith. It says here, healthy believers, you know, helping others, sharing the faith, multiplying people's faith, in other words, increasing it. That's why we're here, isn't it, to help others? Help others know Jesus, help others know the Savior. You know, I like what the Sabbath school lesson said this, this week. We're sa very simple. We're saved by the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. He died in our place. We love him and we want to serve him. You know, we have a lot of talent, a lot of spiritual gifts in this church. And you don't, you know, the, our teachers, our children's teachers, you know, you're passing on a legacy. Those children, they won't forget. I still remember Mrs. Espinosa, a teacher I had, I think it was primary and juniors. You know, what you're teaching, people will remember, our children will remember. So it's so important. One of the major areas of discipleship is teaching. Jesus spent a lot of time teaching. And also modeling. We have to be Christians, Christ-like. And we can only be that way when we receive him into our hearts and he starts transforming our lives, becoming more like Christ. You know, don't be afraid to smile. You're a Christian. You know, we need to radiate, let our light shine. Yes, you've heard that little song they sing in children's, a sermon in shoes. We need to be a sermon in shoes. You know, we need to reflect Christ in our lives. So we are to take what's been given to us and what we need to do is pass the baton. Pass the baton to others. We want to see many people in the kingdom. And so, I want to, I want to, um, you know, for us to leave a legacy in our home, our church, you must look to people to carry it for us. People are the ones that carry it. You know, God needs you, in other words, needs me. We're his hands and feet. But first, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's going to open doors. He equips us to do ministry. He opens doors. And so we need to remember, like Jesus, we need to disciple others, instruct others, teach others, train others, mentoring, modeling, participation. Give those we are mentoring the opportunity to practice, to put in practice what they learn. That's what Jesus did. You know, it's so important to train our children to serve our youth, you know, deacons, children, you know, people need to get involved in the church. If we want a legacy to continue, we need to continue teaching, helping others to fill the places of others that are no longer able to because of their age or sickness, whatever it may be. But the legacy 
of faith, of teaching, needs to continue. And so that's my prayer for you, you know, um, to be able to help others. And, um, you know, I'm passing the baton. I'm passing the baton to Pastor Jeff Heppenstall. I mean, uh, Rosenthal, I'm sorry. I'm passing the baton to Pastor Jeff Rosenthal. And, you know, he's going to take it. And you're going to be able to do ministry, life with him. And it's my prayer that, you know, we have so many good ministries in this, this church, so many good talents, so many good abilities here. And I truly sure would like to see this church continue growing, continue serving. And I know God's going to bless you richly. It's going to be beautiful. But remember, to leave a legacy, we need to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to instruct others in our homes. So it's a legacy of faith. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. We need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'd like to um, thank the church. You know, I've had two opportunities to serve here. And it's just been a blessing. You know, I'm um, retired, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I was retired for three months. I didn't like it. <laughs> So, back to ministry. I've been ministering now for some time. I think I've been to six churches. And um, so, I want you to continue. I really would like to see people using their talents, their abilities, their attributes. And God will equip you to serve. You know, in vacation Bible school, in the classrooms, you know, to have, to pass the legacy, we have to get involved using those abilities that God, those attributes that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. So that's my prayer. I'd like to invite my wife to come up, um, to come up for a minute. <clears throat> As you know, she's the one that we get together to do the uh, pictures. She, um, before I, I preach a sermon to you, I preach it to her. <laughs> she falls asleep at times. <laughs> no, no, she does these beautiful pictures. Um, and, um, she has, uh, you know, and so she's been a, a, just a great help um, in my ministry. That's it. I, too, want to say thank you for the wonderful second time around and Laguna Niguel. Like my husband mentioned on the first Sabbath we were here this last time, this is the first time in 50 years of ministry that we have been able to pastor the same church twice. And what a blessing and what a joy that has been, which means that you guys are twice as much special to us because we've been able to pastor twice here. So I'm just very, very thankful to the Lord for this opportunity. We may be gone. We're not going too far. But we will take you in our hearts. And just as my husband said, he's passing the baton to Pastor Jeff. I'd like to pass the baton to Mrs. Jeff as she comes into this wonderful congregation. I know you will treat her just as kind as you have me. And we will be praying for you as we move on our next assignment. We will take you in our hearts, and we love you very, very much. We take beautiful memories the first time around, we had the COVID uninvited visitor that was here with us, but we've been able to make up a little bit of that for the time that we weren't able to be together as much as we could the first time around. So God bless you, each and one, 
every one of you. And we don't live that far, so if you guys are ever in the Riverside area, stop by. We'd be happy to go with you to grab a bite or go to the Mission Inn or do anything that you would like in that time. We love you. Our house is open and our hearts are open to you. Mi casa es tu casa. God bless you. You know, got a call from the conference um, back in July informing me that July 1 said, you just completed in this conference uh, 50 years of ministry. I said, really? It didn't seem that long. <laughs> but we've been doing it together. We've been doing ministry together for so many years. But we want to thank you once again for your patience, for your time, and God bless you. <laughs>